my final question for today is regarding music. Many Muslims consider music to be allowed. Could you just confirm, did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa speak against music? There is a great difference of opinion as far as the Muslims are concerned, whether music is allowed or not, whether it's permitted or not. But there is no verse in the Quran directly prohibiting music, but there are indications. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 6, it says that among them there are those people who purchase idle tales without knowledge and without meaning, and they mislead the people away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they ridicule the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the people who will receive a humiliating punishment. So based on this, if we say tafsir, many of the tafsir says that this idle tales without knowledge, without meaning, refers to an Islamic songs and the musical instruments, if you read the tafsir. As far as the Prophet prohibiting music, there are various say hadith. So if you read the hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then there'll be no doubt whether it's permitted or prohibited. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number seven, hadith number 5590. The beloved Prophet said that from among my followers, there will be some people who will make illicit sex, that is adultery and fornication, as well as wearing of silk, drinking intoxicants, and using musical instruments as legal. There will be among my people who will make some things which are illegal, that is adultery, fornication, wearing of silk, having intoxicants, and the playing of music instruments as legal. Now this hadith, when it says that they will make certain things legal, and we know that intoxicants is haram, we know very well that adultery, fornication is haram, because it is mentioned along with these things which are forbidden, musical instruments are mentioned along with them, it indicates that the Prophet has prohibited them. But some people will make it legal, and we know there are some scholars who today do permit that playing of music instruments is allowed. So this hadith is very clear cut in saying that musical instruments are haram. But there are other say hadith which do permit some musical instruments, especially the duff, that is the tambourine. If you read the hadith of a beloved Prophet Muhammad of Sahih Bukhari, volume number five, hadith number 4001, where it is said that Muhammad after consummating his marriage, he came and he sat outside along with one of the sabas when two small girls were playing the tambourine, that is a duff, and they were praising that Sahaba, his father, how he died in jihad. And when they started praising the Prophet, they said, don't praise me, you can say what you were saying earlier. Indicating that the Prophet did not prohibit them from playing the tambourine. Furthermore, there's a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, hadith number 987, where the Prophet, while he was lying down, his hadith is narrated by Hazrat Naisha, Milla with her. She says that two small girls were playing the tambourine and they were singing. When Hazrat Abu Bakr, Milla with with him, the father of Hazrat Aisha, Milla with her, he comes and he says to them, stop it. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sleeping on a cot. He tells to Hazrat Abu Bakr, Milla with with him, that let them do it. These are the days of Eid. He said, let them do it. Furthermore, there's a hadith in Tirmidhi, Hadith number 3690, where our beloved Prophet Musa he says that there was a person who approaches the Prophet and tells him that I had vowed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you come back victoriously, I will sing and I will play the duff. I will bind the tambourine. But the Prophet said, if you have vowed, then do it. If you have not vowed, then don't do it. So these hadith do indicate that musical instruments per se is haram, except for the duff that the tambourine. The Prophet did permit it sometimes. Dr. Zakia, thank you very much for that answer, that final answer today in this, what's been a very, very interesting and informative, as usual, a session regarding the topic Ramadan, what is recommended and what is discouraged. Thank you very much, Dr. Zakia. Jazakallah khairan. Brothers and sisters, 
I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have understood and are ready to implement all the suggestions that have been made today. I certainly must take on board some of the advices that Dr. Zakia has given today.